हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे सो वी कंटिन्यू रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम वी आर ऑन कैंटो सेवन चैप्टर थर्टीन वी आर द सेक्शन वे प्रहलाद महाराज वॉज यू नो ट्रेवलिंग अराउंड द यूनिवर्स विथ इज कॉन्फिडेंशियल एसोसिएट्स and then he's come to the banks of the river and he's seen a uh, avadut there who is maintaining himself living like a python but because pralad maharaj is a mahabhagwat he can understand that this person this personality is a great saintly person and he's put up a question with him that you know you're living like a python you don't move but yet you appear to be so fat and then the avadut is replying that you know i i'm here in this material body i'm in this material body and i have a choice now from here either to go to the heavenly planets if i do fruitive activities pious activities or uh, to go to the spiritual world if i take the path of liberation or get degraded to animal life so we are going to continue of course in the purport propad points out that the the western philosophy only speaks of evolution from animal to man but does not speak about how man can also get degraded into animal bodies and that is given in this is a evidence that although some one may have the body of a human being right now but based on how we are acting in this life the next life could be that of an animal so we are going to continue text 27 sukham asyatmano roopam sukham asyatmano roopam sarve hari krishna shilpa ji krishna. you said that we didn't finish the previous one it was too long hmm I'm sorry. We finished, no? That he should say last time from fatigue. Like yesterday, you said that we didn't finish the. You finished? No, we have to start from this one. Twenty. Because you said that it's too long, so we'll leave it. Okay. Maybe yeah, I'm so, wrong. Yeah, this one. Okay. We, we already okay. did this twenty six. We did yesterday. That Prabhupada puts in the purport that and uh the difference between a man and animal. is that the human being needs to regulate the activities of eating sleeping mating and defending animals don't regulate those activities but for a human being they, we need to follow the rules and regulative uh, regulations to regulate our activities yeah so we are going to go to today's verse 27 so come asyatmano roopam so come asyatmano roopam roopam so मन संस्पर्श जाोगाषाण translation and purport by his divine grace as he bhakti vedanta samishla prabhupad the actual form of life for the living entities is one of spiritual happiness which is real happiness this happiness can be achieved only when one stops all materialistic activities material sense enjoyment is simply an imagination therefore considering this subject matter i have ceased from all material activities and i am lying down here so this is this avadut speaking the saintly person he is lying down there and we can understand that he has great knowledge okay the difference between the philosophy of the mayavadis and that of the vaishnavas is explained here in both the mayavadis and vaishnavas know that in materialistic activities there is no happiness the mayavadi philosophers therefore adhering to the slogan brahma satyam jagan mithya want to refrain from false materialistic activities they want to stop 
all activities and merge in the Supreme, Brahman. According to the Vaishnava philosophy, however, if one simply ceases from material, materialistic activity, one cannot remain inactive for very long. And therefore, everyone should engage himself in spiritual activities, which will solve the problem of suffering in this material world. You see, we may say that this material world is false, that the truth is only Brahman. Yes, it's it, what, how we can understand that this material world is not false. It's temporary. We are very much right now inside the body. You know, because if somebody says, oh, well, it is false. But if somebody comes and hits us, we feel it. We'll be like, hey, why are you hitting me? Right? So it's not false. We are very much inside the body. But what we have to do is we have to understand what is the correct activity. Because the soul is always active, cannot stay inactive. It continuously, we have to keep doing something or the other. So we have to find what is the correct engagement. So it is said, therefore, that although the Mayavadi philosophers strive to refrain from materialistic activities and merge in Brahman, and although they may actually merge in the Brahman existence, for want of activity, they fall down again into materialistic activity. Aruya Krichrena Parampadam Tata Patani Adaha. So, you know, already to reach the Brahman is not easy. It's very difficult. It takes lifetimes and lifetimes. It's a it's after all, you know, it's the spiritual sky. So it's not easy to reach the Brahman. But one who is reached there after a lot of endeavor, because he does not know how to act on the spiritual platform, does not know what does the soul do, then after some time, the soul from the Brahman will again come down to the materialistic activities. Because soul cannot remain inactive. You know, we may think that the activity is with the body. But if we see a dead body, it doesn't move. But whereas when it was living, it was always moving. So this activity is actually a symptom of the soul, not of the body. So thus the so-called renouncer, unable to remain in meditation upon Brahman, returns to materialistic activities by opening hospitals and schools and so on. Therefore, simply cultivating knowledge that materialistic activities cannot give one happiness and that one should consequently cease from such activities is insufficient. One should cease from materialistic activities and take up spiritual activities. Then the solution to the problem will be achieved. You know, because one has to act. One, one is going to act. Now we just have to learn how to act. For example, we can't say, I'm not going to eat anymore. We can't say that. You know, we, when, when we are full, we'll say, okay, I don't want to eat anymore. But then after a few hours when we are hungry... Again, we are like, oh my God, where's the food? What shall I eat? Shall I eat samosa? Or shall I eat pakora? Right? But then what we have to do is we have to understand what should we eat. So similarly, act, we need to act. But we now we have to understand how to act. So then the solution to the problem will be achieved. Prabhupada is explaining. Spiritual activities are activities performed according to the order of Krishna. Anukulena Krishna nu Shilanam. If one does whatever Krishna says, his activities are not material. So acting on the order of Krishna, following Krishna's instructions, what Krishna is telling in Bhagavad Gita, you know, we simply have to follow that. Krishna is saying, You do for my pleasure, do your duty for my pleasure. So Krishna is not saying don't do anything, just sit down in one place. No, Krishna is saying you do all your duties. He's telling Arjun. In fact, Arjun wanted to renounce. Arjun said, I'm going to the forest. Krishna said, what you will go forest? You're a Kshatriya. You know, your modes of nature will make you act. Rather, you do your duty, but do it for my pleasure. So, for example, when Arjuna fought in response to the order of Krishna, his activities were not material. Fighting for sense gratification is a materialistic activity. But fighting by the order of Krishna is spiritual. 
by spiritual activities, one becomes eligible to go back home, back to Godhead, and then enjoy a blissful life eternally. Today in the morning, we were speaking about surrender, right? For your last night. Last night, we were speaking about surrender. So, of course, our surrender happens in stages. No, we, can, we are not able to completely surrender to Krishna. But little by little, at least we say, okay, let me hear what the devotees are going to say. Let me hear what Krishna has to say in Bhagavad Gita. That is surrender to whatever degree. Then one may say, okay, let me hear what the instructions are. Let me hear what the rules and regulations are. Then one may say, okay, let me follow some rules and regulations. So gradually surrendering to Krishna, gradually, gradually spiritualizing the activities. And in this way, walking towards the spiritual world, going back home, back to Godhead. And over there, living an eternal, blissful life, full of enjoyment. Here in the material world, everything is but a mental concoction. That will never give us real happiness. Why is it said mental concoction? What does it mean? Everything is but a mental concoction. We are putting so much energy. We put so much effort, time. It's being called mental concoction. How can we understand? Because we are thinking from mind and senses. We are thinking from mind and senses. Yeah, that's right. And what are we thinking? We are the body. That's right. We are all the activities we are thinking, I'm the body. We completely forget. We have completely forgotten I'm the soul. And so whole day our time and energy goes thinking, I'm the body, I'm the body. So that's why it's said mental concoction. The practical solution, therefore, is to cease from materialistic activities and engage in spiritual activities. So we do. We do our eating, sleeping, mating, defending, but doing that in relation to Krishna. We do our duties, but offer the result to Krishna. Krishna, somehow the other, you put me in this position. Let me do my duty for your pleasure. Okay. If one works for the sake of pleasing the Supreme Lord, Yagya or Vishnu, one is in liberated life. If one fails to do so, however, he remains in a life of bondage. So, because we are saying, okay, you're not the body or the soul, not the body, the soul. So, we have to realize this knowledge. We have to act as the soul. What does the soul do? How does the soul act? So the soul acts for pleasure of Krishna. So how can we come to that position? How will we be able to offer the result to Krishna? We hear and we chant. The more we hear, the more we chant, the more we will be able to offer the result to Krishna. The more we are coming to the spiritual platform, coming closer to the spiritual platform. Is that okay? Yes. Comments, please. Anything to add? Any doubts? Pretty straightforward, no? Yes, very, very clear. Okay, so going on then. Iti etad atmana swartham. Iti etad atmana swartham. Santam vismritya vaipuman. In this way, the conditioned soul living within the body forgets his self-interest because he identifies himself with the body. Because the body is material, his natural tendency is to be attracted by the varieties of the material world. Thus, the living entity suffers the miseries of material existence. It's true, right? This is our position. We are conditioned souls. And this Brahman is speaking our reality. Isn't it? What is, what is our... Uh, why he's saying we forgot our self-interest? What is our self-interest? Because we are attached to the body. Yeah, that's right. 
because we attach the body, we are all the time we had thinking about the body, we are thinking how to enjoy this material world, our intelligence is just going, how can I enjoy, where I can enjoy. And then in this way, we are looking for enjoyment. Sure, there is enjoyment, not that there is no enjoyment. There is enjoyment in the material world, but it is temporary. And when the enjoyment is finished, then comes the suffering. So everyone is trying to be happy because as explained in the previous verse, Sukham Asyatmano Rupam Sarveho Paratestano When the living entity is in his original spiritual form, he's happy by nature. So the, the soul, the soul is Sat Chit Ananda. That's our real identity. We are spirit soul. Krishnera uh, Jivera Swarup Hai Krishnera Nitya Das that our swarup is that we are servants of Krishna. We are part and parcel of Krishna. So because Krishna has spiritual form and because we are Krishna part and parcel, we also have a spiritual form. And when we are in our original form, we can be very happy. There's no question of miseries for the spiritual being. As Krishna is always happy, the living entities, who are his parts and parcels, are also happy by nature. But because of being put within this material world and forgetting their eternal relationship with Krishna, they have forgotten their real nature. So right now we have forgotten. We have forgotten Krishna. We have forgotten we are the soul. We are thinking we are the body. So that's what is giving us the misery. Just like, you know, we take out a fish from the water. We take out a fish from the water and we are the so the fish is suffering. Then we say, okay, let's give the fish a nice massage. Maybe then it will stop suffering. But it still continues to suffer. Okay, let's give him a, a big buffet of food, Thai food or Italian food. But the fish is still suffering. Okay, let's let's entertain the fish, let's dance for the fish, but the fish is still suffering. How will the suffering of the fish end? How? When he By realizes in the water. when we put him back in the water, that's right. So he's suffering because he's not in his natural environment. Just put him back in the water. He does not need no massage. He does not need no buffet, no dancing. He just needs to be back in the water. So here we we have forgotten our real nature. We have forgotten we are spirit souls, part and parcel of Krishna. So, and once we are back in the spiritual nature, automatically we will be happy. You know, in one of the purports, Prabhupada writes in the purports of the earlier cantos of Bhagavatam, that just being in the spiritual world, one feels happy just by being there. You know, like in the material world, we have to do something to feel happy. We have to put some endeavor to feel happy. But in the spiritual atmosphere, just by being in the spiritual atmosphere, we feel happy. So because every one of us is a part of Krishna, we have a very affectionate relationship with him. But because we have forgotten our identities and are considering the body to be the self, we are afflicted by all the troubles of birth, death, old age and disease. This misconception of materialistic life continues unless and until one comes to understand his relationship with Krishna. The happiness sought by the conditioned soul is certainly only illusion as explained in the next verse. So now we are thinking we are the body. And so what are the troubles that we are getting? What are the, the troubles of birth, death, old age, and disease? Yeah. So now how to stop this? How can we revive our relationship with Krishna? We have to always remember Krishna. Yeah. Hear about Krishna. Yeah. Chant. Yeah. That's right. We have to remember Krishna. And then to in order to remember Krishna all the time, we hear about him, we chant his name, we chant his glories. And in this way, gradually, gradually, we will able to understand 
that, oh, I'm not the body. I'm a spirit soul. I am part and parcel of Krishna. I am servant of Krishna. Okay. So one may say, oh, but I'm chanting now so many years. I'm still thinking I'm the body. I'm still doing the same thing. But well, it's gradual. It takes time. We have been in the material world for a very long time. It's very long. So it's a gradual process. But it's a sure, guaranteed process. It will happen. As we are as we are celebrating this month, right? The Damodar, two fingers too short. Endeavor and mercy. We do the endeavor, and Krishna will give us mercy whenever He wants. We can't we can't force Krishna. Hey, Krishna, now you know I did so much. Now you must give your mercy. Huh? No, patiently, with patience, with determination, we continue to endeavor. Uh, endeavor, and whenever Krishna is pleased. He will surely bestow his mercy. Jalam tad udbhavesh channam. Jalam tad udbhavesh channam. Kitvagyo jalakam yaya. Kitvagyo jalakam yaya. Mrikat sranam upadhavet. Mrikat sranam upadhavet. Tatha a. An yatrartha drikswataha. Tathan yatrartha drikswataha. Just as a deer, because of ignorance, cannot see the water within a well covered by grass, but runs after water elsewhere, the living entity covered by the material body does not see the happiness within himself, but runs after happiness in the material world. So we keep hearing, right? Happiness is found within, happiness is found within. But we are always trying to see what I can do to make myself happy. Happiness is found within. Why? Because Krishna is there in our heart. Krishna is there. This is an accurate example depicting how the living entity, because of lack of knowledge, runs after happiness outside his own self. When one understands his real identity as a spiritual being, he can understand the supreme spiritual being Krishna and the real happiness exchanged between Krishna and oneself. And we can hear the exchanges between the Brajbasis, the Gopis. They are ecstatic. They are ecstatic just to be with Krishna, to sing his glories, to, to chant his pastimes. They're completely blissful because they are with Krishna. So that is a, 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 re, a, a real relationship, of a permanent relationship, of an eternal relationship is with Krishna. It's very interesting to note how this verse points out to the body's growth from the spirit soul. The modern materialistic scientist thinks that life grows from matter. But actually the fact is that matter grows from life. The life or the spiritual soul is compared here into water from which clumps of matter grow in the form of grass. So, you know, we may, one may think that, oh, that the body is what is giving life. And once the body is finished, then all life is finished. But that's not the fact because when the body is there, even once the soul leaves the body, the body does not grow anymore. If we analyze it with a bit of intelligence, we can see that actually the spirit is what is giving rise to matter. It's the spirit which is making the matter grow, not the vice versa. One who's ignorant of scientific knowledge of the spirit soul does not look inside the body to find happiness in the soul. Instead, he goes outside to search for happiness. Just as a deer, without knowledge of the water beneath the grass, goes out to the desert to find water. So the soul is Satchidananda, always blissful. We simply have to understand I'm the soul and we will feel blissful. How to understand I'm the soul? We engage in hearing and chanting. By chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. We will come to understand it. The Krishna consciousness movement is trying to remove the ignorance of misled human beings who are trying to find water outside the jurisdiction of life. 
raso vesa raso ham apsu kaunteya. The taste of water is Krishna. To quench one's thirst, one must taste water by association with Krishna. This is the Vedic injunction. So we can be happy only when we revive our relationship with Krishna. Krishna is the source of all happiness, the source of all pleasure. Like when we are thirsty, we simply have to go to the water fountain and drink water. Then our thirst is quenched, right? You know, but if we are thirsty and we don't find where the real water is, where the fountain of water is, we'll continue to remain thirsty. Similarly, Krishna is the source of pleasure, the reservoir of pleasure. We simply revive our relationship with him and we can be completely happy, completely blissful. Any questions, comments? I'm just wondering, just such a small <laughs> spark, the soul, it's one ten thousand of the tip of the hair, right? And imagine like how powerful it is. <laughs> yeah. So if, if the soul is like, that, what is Krishna then? Krishna's power. Mm, yeah. Right? Just imagine. Yeah. So true. It's so true. How powerful is Krishna? We are just part of him and we soul is so powerful. So true. So true. Like one of the scientists say, right? I think it's Einstein that you know, how intelligent is God? My intelligence compared to God's intelligence is just like a grain of sand on the beach. You know? So how intelligent is Krishna? How powerful he is? So true. Okay. Is it okay? We'll stop here for today. Yeah. Hmm? Yes. Yes. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai shlapur ki jai gorbhati ki jai. Thank you all for listening.